Hello Opal's users. This short tutorial will illustrate the importing of MARC records provided to your library from a vendor, such as Junior Library Guild, Follett, Baker and Taylor, etc. Oftentimes the vendor will give you an account where you can sign in and download a file of MARC records to a folder on your desktop, or they may email the MARC records to you. Either way, uh, you will save these records and use them to import. Prior to showing you the import process, I would like to point out that on our help pages, which can be found at help.opalsinfo.net, right here, help.opalsinfo.net, and then once you get to the help screen, you can go then to the items section right here and choose import records. I have it up. This is very good to look at. You can also download it as a PDF. And this will go through the entire process step by step and mentions things like records with identical ISBN and title will automatically merge into one record with multiple holdings, etc., etc. It's a very good document to look at. And by the way, we also note 98% of your work, the default options are preferred. Not only are they preferred, but they're probably just fine for your library. And then below this is a step-by-step -step process to go through the importation of a MARC file from a vendor. It also talks about each of the items on the import screen. For example, record source. If we look at the import screen, going to items, import, You'll do this each time you're importing a vendor MARC record file. And you'll see uh, the first thing is select a file, browse, we'll do that in a moment. Um, but record source, 99% of the libraries will choose generic, unless you got your records from OCLC, in which case you would put a check mark next to OCLC. Re-import is done if you've sent your records out to an outside source to be reworked and, and uh, made better records, actually. When they re-import, you do not get options to merge, etc., etc. Uh, the re-import option, not used very often, um, will just bring the records right back in as they were, um, although you've probably had them looked at and redone by some outside vendor. But it's not used very often. The character encoding scheme, we suggest UTF-8 as it works far better with foreign language, uh, i.e. books other than English and diacritics, things like that. The import option, automatically merge. That means that books with the same ISBN number and title will automatically merge. And the new holdings, if you have that book existing in your system and this new import file contains additional holdings or new copies of the book, they will be automatically merged in. The holding import option would be set to update. I'm going to move over to our help screen and just show you. Here's some notes on the record source. Here's some notes on the merge option. Here's some notes on the holding import option. And the update updates existing holding with incoming holdings. And if we go back to the import holding import option, you'll see update is the uh, preferred method so that new holdings will be added to existing records of the same as been entitled. Add imported records into the new item list. If you'd like to add the file of MARC records that you're bringing in, you can put a check mark right here and that will put them on your new holdings or your new items list. Please note that the new items list um, Check this box to have items you are importing added to the new item list. If the file you are importing has more than 300 records in it, then Opals will not add them as new items. This is to ensure that new libraries or libraries that have had work done on their MARC records um, do not have massive amounts of items showing up as new items when they'd already been existing in the catalog. By the way, here's a note on the additional holding subfield. The additional holding subfield found right here, the additional holding subfield right in here. That's typically the 852X or Z. And if you'd like to have an additional holding subfield added to this file of import records, you could check yes. You could put in, say, subfield code X. And oftentimes people will put in the 
person who's imported the record their initials or they may put in a funding note so all records imported in this file will have that note and you can always search for these records and find um, all the records that may say something like funding uh, Smith Foundation things like that uh, you don't have to add extra holding subfields but if you'd like you can put varied information in them and usually again it's X or Z I'm just going to say no at this point now I'm going to go get a record I'm going to click browse and I'm going to pull up this record this uh, file of mark records from Follett it's a hard copy file I'm not going to mark in processing yes because these are shelf ready I can just import them and they're ready for the shelves as they have their spine labels and barcodes on the record source probably 99 percent of the time you'll have generic and that's the default the character encoding scheme I'm going to leave it at UTF-8 in the event there are any uh, books in my file that are other than English and have diacritics UTF-8 works with those far better the import option automatically merge so items with the same ISBN and title will merge together and associated holdings will be under one record holding import option we want to update we want to update the current records with any new holdings coming in that match the current record in our system add import records to the new items list I'll put a check mark there because it's under 300 I'm not going to add an additional holding subfield now I will click upload in a moment the records will show up on the screen down at the bottom on a new line and I see that I have 48 records and I will have to choose accept or reject before I choose accept or reject I would like to look at the records to make sure that the vendor uh, has them in good order I'm going to have a look at the call numbers briefly and the barcodes to do this simply click on the number 48 in a moment the screen will refresh and we'll see all 48 records in this particular file and I can see the titles the authors publication dates the call numbers and the barcodes um, I determined that these barcodes are the barcodes that I assigned to the vendor the call numbers look good the file looks fine to get back and do the import simply click import list in a moment the screen will refresh and put me back showing that file right down below here a bit and I'm going to click accept and please bear in mind that there's three phases right now data has been in queue check back later for completion so I can click OK just bear in mind that if you sit here and look at the screen you're not going to see anything happen you could go do other library duties come back in 10 minutes right now you'll see it's in a waiting state there's three states waiting processing and done right now it says waiting so I'll be off doing other library duties I'm just going to go to the home page for a moment and let's just assume I don't know five ten minutes have passed and let's see if the file has been completed so I'm going back to items I'm going back to import and in a moment my import screen will refresh we'll go down and look at the 48 records and see what status they're in at this moment now I did not wait five minutes they're still waiting so we'll check back in just a few minutes we put a record or a file of mark records in for importing and it was in a waiting status and we've waited a few minutes and now I'm going to check to see if they've been processed and imported and are done I will go back to the items tab choose import and the import screen will come up I'll page down slightly and look at the top line which represents that which I imported today and by the way you can see today's date and even the time 234 uh, and you can also see the type hard copy and I have auto merge and I'm not updating the holdings in other words I didn't use this option to put my initials in or some certain fund that the books were purchased whatever and you'll see that the file has been completed 47 records were imported as new and one was merged with an existing record to see our records we can go up to administration reports and tools 
and we will go to the far left column on reports and tools the item acquisitions list and if you imported today and went to the item acquisition list on the same day after the import finished you will see all the items right here and you can just check them out again by the way if you did import a file and mark them in processing we can fix that as well I'll do another import I'm going to go back up to import or item sorry and choose import I'm going to choose another file and this time I'm going to make them in processing in other words these books aren't shelf ready I need to put on the spine labels and barcodes I'm choosing hard copy in processing yes generic 99% of the time UTF-8 is the preferred encoding scheme I'm going to automatically merge I'm going to update my holdings I'll be putting these on the new item list and I will add uh, no I won't even bother the heck with it I could add my initials but we don't need to at this time now I just simply click upload don't forget that you could look at your records right here by clicking the 11 I've already done that they look fine so I'm going to just simply click accept and remember this may take a few minutes so you can go and do some other library duties I will click OK check back later for completion so we'll wait a few minutes and we'll check back and see when the records finished and we'll look at how to work out the in processing option okay we've set a file up for import We've chosen the in processing option, which means I'll be putting spine labels and barcodes on. Uh, the in processing gives me a bit of time to get the books shelf ready. So now I'm going to go back to items and check to see if the file has finished. Items, import, and in a moment we'll see the import options come up. We'll go down the screen a bit and look at the very top file, and we see that it is done. It's been completed. Nine records were imported, two were merged. In other words, I had two records in my system that were exactly like two additional copies that I have purchased, which were merged into the existing um, mark record in my library. You'll also see that the item initial status is marked as in processing. In other words, it gives me some time to get the bookshelf ready. Well, I do have my books all shelf ready, and now I would like to find those items and get them out of the in processing mode and into active as they're ready to be loaned to do that if you do choose in processing which is right here um, if your books are shelf ready you wouldn't do that to get them back to the active status I'm going to the administration tab reports and tools and on the far left we'll see varied reports and I will see a report called in processing items I will click that report and it'll open up once opened it gives me the option to choose a date so if you imported the file on a certain date you can do a date range selection I'll put a check mark in here and I did the file today so I'm just going to leave the default of September 6th from to September 6th click create report and we see there are my books that I chose to be in processing as I got them shelf ready they are all now ready for the shelves ready to be loaned so I'm going to select the page check marks down the left column and I will now change the status to and in other words out of in processing to active and say and click OK are you sure you want to change items to stat status active okay so in a few minutes all these items will show active in your catalog not in processing and are ready to be loaned one more file to import items import once again uh, as we're waiting for the screen to refresh uh, it's good to have a file or a folder on your desktop mark records or vendor mark records and that's where you can place your files once they're imported you can clean them out of your folder you don't need to leave them there uh, once they're imported I'm going to select a file well, let's look down here I see that I've done a few um, I rejected a file because of uh, the barcodes weren't right the vendor sent it back and I processed this 
uh, same file I can see by the 171 as the barcodes were set right for me and I reprocessed the file. So I'm going to import another file, click browse. I'm going to my mark files. I'll choose a mark file by, by double clicking. It's hard copy. In processing, no. It's all shelf ready. Generic, yes, almost all the time. UTF-8, yes, automatically merge. Update my holdings, add them to the new item list, and I am going to put my initials as the cataloger who imported these into the 852X, and I'll put my initials here. Now I'm going to click Upload, and in a moment the screen will refresh, and we will see the file, and it will ask me if I would like to accept or reject the file. Please note that I've chosen this file twice, that's why you're seeing it here. Uh, I'm just going to reject it. Okay, I hope this short tutorial has been helpful. We've covered the importing of vendor records, supplied uh, mark records by your vendors. We've looked at how you can mark them as in processing and then put them back in as active once they're shelf ready. And we've looked at all the options um, on this screen as you'll choose. But again, most of these option defaults will be what you'll choose. And don't forget to have a look at um, opals, help.opalsinfo.net. And if you'd like to read how to import records, just again, help.opalsinfo.net. Go to items, choose import records, and here's a uh, guide that will take you step by step and you can do a print-friendly version and download it in PDF. I hope this uh, short tutorial has been helpful and all the best as you add to your collections.